I think Eric wanted to come in really quickly and share something with you guys. What are you talking about today, Eric? I want to talk about five things, five things that you can do to battle and prevent pests in your home. And that is P-E-S-T-S. -S. And I want to give a <laughs> shout out to Ann Sander1234. Hi, Ann. So this video was actually inspired by a comment she left uh, it was actually a video about lawnmowers. I did a video a while back talking about a new electric lawnmower I purchased mm -hmm. uh, called Battle of the Mowers 2017 Electric or, or Gas. If you haven't checked out that video, go check it out. <laughs> but just to let you know, guys, we do read the comments. And Sander1234 asked, because in the video we show our yard, she said, look, I see a lot of trees about you guys. You know, you live in a wooded area. Do you guys ever have any bug or rodent problems? And can you do a prevention video on this question? Uh, well, Ann Sander1234, that is a great, great question, and it's very relevant to where we live, and you guys may or may not know this, but Atlanta, in terms of cities in the United States, Atlanta has the largest tree canopy of any city in the United States. It's a very heavily forested, heavily wooded city, which brings some of the charm to the city. That's one of the reasons people like Atlanta, and also the Southeast in general is just very humid. Why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up because with that, comes a lot of pests and obviously pests live everywhere but here we have our own unique challenges with pests just because of our, our environment and it's funny our challenges with pest prevention actually started a long time ago at our first house out in the suburbs it was one of these typical kind of suburban areas where they had kind of cleared out some forest and built houses and because it had previously been forest you know like a month before uh, we got a lot of unique pests that you wouldn't normally see. Like what? Like, like you tell them, babe, my lovely cameraman, what do, what do you remember from those early days of our first Oh my gosh, guys. I remember after it would rain, if we had a heavy rain and we went outside, no lie, there would be crawfish, crawfish. in the backyard. And we thought it was the neighbors who would have, you know, maybe had a, a barbecue yeah. or a seafood boil and threw the crawfish in the backyard. We in our backyard. Yeah, we were like, why didn't you guys invite us to the crawfish boil? Like, right. Oh, That's from but the you yeah. could, if you took a closer look, they were like underground. They were coming from underground, like, I don't know, gasping for air or whatever. And it would be hundreds of them it was crazy we also got scorpions I've never I didn't grow up with scorpions never had scorpions we get these little little tiny black scorpions mm -hmm. and the small scorpions are supposed to be the deadly ones so that mm -hmm. was really scary we got these huge freak of nature spiders I think you had to kill one of them with like a frying pan yeah huge it was, that was pretty scary a <laughs> um, couple of lizards so let us know in the comments you know we all familiar with kind of the typical pests spiders and ants and stuff like that but let us know in the comments if you've had something like crazy mm -hmm. try to take over your house. Yeah. So back then is when we started, one, we got a full-time exterminator mm -hmm. or extermination service. Um, and two, we started doing a lot of it ourselves. All right. So we hired an exterminator and I would kind of watch what they did. And so we also did a lot of it ourselves. So a lot of this is tricks of the trade we've learned just by watching them. So even if you don't want to necessarily hire a regular exterminator, these are things that you can do just as a homeowner very inexpensively to keep pests out of your home. If you can hire the exterminator, they're not necessarily overly expensive. You know, it's just, you know, what, 20, 30 bucks a month? Um, it's, you know what I would compare it to? If you if you get your yard fertilized, if you have like a turf care or lawn care services like that, that's mm -hmm. about how often they come. Mm -hmm. That's about the price. So it's on the realm of, you know, getting your furniture, your yard fertilized or something like that. It's not really expensive. So yeah, and when you, you have really them, good. they are able to get into all the nooks and the crannies and they know they know exactly where these things are gonna hide out. So if you can, go ahead and hire a professional, but I think what Eric's gonna show you now, the things that you can do on if you, own. you know, prefer to do it on your own. And again, we learned a lot of this by following those guys around and talking to them. And one of the things we've been having a lot of conversations with our exterminator about is making sure your home isn't comfortable for pets. So this is tip one. And what's unique about tip one, this involves no pesticide. We're not even talking about pesticides so far. We're talking about making your home unattractive. Because if you think about bugs, and this is what our exterminator told us, they're not necessarily looking for food all the time. Um, a lot of times they just want somewhere warm and wet and dark, right? They're looking for those conditions. So if you can keep that out of your home, that's a good way to keep them away. And that's why we're starting here in the bathroom. Yeah, why are we in the bathroom? <laughs> because this is one of the areas in your home that can breed a lot of moisture. All right, so we're in our guest bathroom yeah. downstairs right now. Yeah, 
especially if you've got teenagers or people that like to take long shots. And bathrooms, you know, sometimes are very enclosed spaces, so they hold a lot of moisture. So one of the things we've done down here, we love dehumidifiers. We've got three of them, one on each level. Uh, the one on our upstairs floor stays in our son's bedroom. Uh, because again, it's a Jack and Jill bath, very enclosed. So it attracts a lot of moisture. So we make sure that he runs that. We keep the doors open, we open the windows just to keep it um, airy and breezy. So keep down on the moisture and dehumidify. Kind of limit where you eat in the house, right? And this goes back to, you know, our teenage son, you have children. It's tempting to let them eat in their rooms, right? Or just eat in other places in the house. But even if you're clean, even if your kids are clean, it's just one of those things you're gonna drop crumbs. If you can kind of limit everything to maybe just the kitchen or maybe just where you guys watch your movies and not have people eat all over, that's gonna really help cut down on just having little crumbs of food everywhere. How do you store things? Do you have a lot of clutter? And by clutter, I specifically mean newspaper, magazines, cardboard boxes. A long time ago, we got rid of all of our cardboard boxes. If we store something, it is in a plastic sealed bin. As a matter of fact, when we just did our basement, I think we had like two cardboard boxes that were left. I got rid of those. Uh, bugs will eat that, they will live in that, they will live in old paper, old newspaper. So box that stuff so, up, seal it up, put it in plastic. The thing you have to think about is, are you creating little highways or entry points for your for pests to get into the house? So I'm not sure if you can see it outside of this window here, we've got a tree up against our house. It's a beautiful tree, right? And we all like having trees up against our house but you gotta keep it trimmed. Um, because the bugs, I mean, this is like a highway. If this is touching your house, the bugs will literally kind of migrate from the tree uh, over to your, to your home, right? One of the interesting pets we had was ladybugs. And we found out that they were kind of hopping from trees over to um, our house. Another thing, and this is actually something we learned from our exterminator, and you wouldn't think about it, it's not obvious, keep your gutters clean. That's another kind of pest super highway. They love dirty gutters. That's an entry point for them to get into your house, to get into your attic. So keep those gutters uh, as clean as possible. Now we're actually gonna talk about some, some bug control, some actual pesticides, some things that you can spray around your home to keep the pests away. I use a bug barrier spray. Um, this is just one example. This is spe Spectricide. Um, I believe you can pick this up at either Home Depot or Lowe's. This is the brand I like. Um, I believe this bottle will cost you around $10. And this is both, what I like about this, you know, you can buy specialized sprays for different types of pests, but this will stop just about everything. In fact, if you look on the back, it'll tell you all the different pests and it's an indoor outdoor product. So when you use it outdoors, um, you can use it just about anywhere. It's pretty much safe for, um, you know, your vegetables, your grass, your plants, your trees. It's not really going to harm that. Definitely they'll read the instructions and make sure you follow them very carefully. Um, also, if you use it outside, obviously you don't want to use it right before it rains because it's just going to wash all the pesticide away. So you want to kind of use it when it's going to be uh, a little bit dry. Now, when you use this on the inside of your home, you know, you really want to use a little bit of your imagination and kind of think to yourself, if I were a pest, where would be a nice, dark, cool, maybe a little bit damp place where I could hide? So this is something you, you can spray. You don't want to spray it too liberally. You know, you want to use just enough. Um, you don't want to certainly soak any surfaces, but spray it along baseboards, um, behind toilets, sinks, refrigerators, uh, window and door seals, any type of entrance to your house, uh, trash can areas, uh, certainly attics and basement, anywhere again, really that's dark, um, cool and hidden and you want to use common sense here, right? If you have little ones or are pregnant or have pets that like to get into stuff You just want to be careful. You definitely want to read the instructions uh, And generally spray in areas where you know that people normally wouldn't have contact You know, this isn't something I would say you're gonna spray um, On your kitchen table, right? And a lot of what I did again was just kind of watch the exterminators that we would have come over and kind of see where they sprayed and that's generally where I where I spray um, this home barrier. And this is something that you can actually hook up to your water hose. Uh, and the water of course flows through here and sprays out the pesticide. And this is something that you can really spray kind of in your lawn. I'll spray it up against the house a little bit. Again, not when it's gonna rain. You wanna do it when it's dry so it can um, soak in a little bit. And this is really good for keeping, you know, gnats and mosquitoes and kind of the things that can really come in from your yard um, away. And also, you know, if you have children that spend a lot of time outside, you know, kind of keeping those mosquitoes away, um, some of those other pests. And certainly you want to do the common sense things outside, like, 
you know, not have standing water, beware of just trash and stuff that might collect in your yard. But this is another uh, great uh, thing that I found to really keep the pests away. So just to review guys, we've talked about three things so far that I use to keep pests away. The first one was, you know, not making your home an inviting place for pests. Then we showed this product, which is a home barrier product, which you can generally spray all over, um, you know, focus on surface areas inside and outside your house. This is more of a yard spray where you can really spray your yard, bushes, trees, you know, a little bit. I will spray this up against the house itself to kind of keep the bugs away. So again, kind of two barrier products. It's, you almost want to have like a shield, right? And then the uh, fourth thing, number four here, kind of the fourth barrier product. And this is, an, this is an idea or something that we actually got from our exterminator. He actually told us this. He said, go buy some fire ant killer. And it's good for fire ants, certainly, but this also is good for all kinds of different pests. Even though it doesn't necessarily say it on the label, sprinkle this around the perimeter of your home and this will keep just about everything away. So this is another great tip uh, we got from our, our exterminator. So I tell you what, let's go outside. We'll spread some of this fire ant killer around. Uh, which will be our number four thing. And then I'll show you number five, the fifth thing uh, that we do to keep pests away. All right, guys, and excuse the sweat. It's a hot one out here today. It's like 90 degrees, even though it's like, we're, we're well in the fall. But anyway, I'm gonna put down our number four tip, which is the fire ant killer. And remember, this is a barrier that's gonna kill more than fire ants. And as I put this down, I wanna show you our fifth tip. We haven't talked about termites. Uh, termites are a big problem just about everywhere in the U.S., but especially here in the Southeast. Um, you actually have to keep kind of a termite bond on your house. So these are Centricon uh, termite bait and traps. So if you're a homeowner, you definitely want to, uh, if, even if you don't have an exterminator for like your, you, you just your day-to-day -day pests, you definitely want to have an exterminator and keep your termite bond up to date. It's a little bit of a pain, I know. I think it costs like $500 or so every five years. And like every year you have to get them to come out to inspect for like $100 or so. But as a condition of your mortgage and to be able to sell your house and keep your insurance up to date, you've got to keep those termites away. And termites will absolutely destroy your home. I had a friend who <laughs> let their termite coverage lapse and they actually got a termite infestation, ended up costing them thousands of dollars. So it's worth the money, put some money aside and keep your termite bond and your termite exterminator warranty up to date. Now, in terms of natural pest control, um, you know, I know a lot of folks don't want to use pesticides and chemicals. So, you know, we've got an example here. We've got the Centricon, which is of course a pesticide, but right next to it, um, we are doing some natural pest control. These are actually uh, mint plants. So what you'll find if you research natural pest controls, you have to look for plants that repel insects, um, essential oils, again, plants like vinegar, uh, lemongrass, um, and you know, it's funny, vinegar is one of the things that repels pests. Vinegar works for just about everything, including pest control and cleaning. So again, keeping kind of a clean environment, using those plants, you can do some research online, eliminating things like standing water. You see here, I focused on the faucet, you know, leaky faucet, faucets, both indoors and outdoors um, can attract pests. Cause again, they look for that, that moisture in the environment.